Well, um, Mitoman is a project that has been in my mind since 2007 uh, when I was working on a French TV series called Les Héros de la Plage. It was my first uh, real After Effects gig. On this first project, I learned a lot of what will define my way of using After Effects. And since that, since that day, I've learned two things uh, really important. The first is working as a team, as a family, is really important to me. And the second thing I learned is that if you want to do things in post-production, you have to create the tools to make your post-production work. And your whole pipeline uh, of work must be defined since pre-production. All, all of these things happened at a time where I wanted to grow my own project. Uh, my creative side was asking me to do something. And I had this idea of um, traditional TV series a small duration, like 20 minutes or less. I was really inspired by how uh, Alexandre Astier came to, came to create Camelot, which is a very popular show here in France. I went back to my animation roots because visual effects for TV series in France are just shitty. And I wanted my show to be funny because of the story and not because of the way it looked. I had a passion for um, animation since I first watched The Simpsons when I was a kid. And I always wanted to do something like that, even more after I saw the first season of South Park. And in 2008, I was in, in this animation production company and I showed them the screenplay for the TV series. And they told me, the first thing they told me th was, look, Sebastian, uh, it's cool but you have to remove a lot of things. You know, you have crowds and crowds are very expensive in animation. And I knew they were going to tell me that. So I took the producer, I said, okay, come with me. And we were walking in this great open space and I showed him uh, something quite amusing. I spent a day uh, on the South Park website, trying the avatar creator. And I spent a day uh, screen capping all the variation I could have to create 20 haircuts and 20 faces and 20 uh, shirts and, and pants and for man and woman to create this little cutout things. And I show that to, to my producer. I say, look, I've got here uh, piece, bits and pieces of uh, South Park characters. I'm inside After Effects. I'm clicking on this button and look, you've got a 10,000 crowd right in a sec. And my producer told me that, okay, so now we can have crowds. And at that day I say, okay, I want to do it my way. I want to, I don't want to limit myself. So my producer took my screenplays and he went to see some of the French TV channels. It was at that time when Canal Plus, which is the French HBO, cancelled the second season of Moot Moot. Moot Moot was an adult animation show. It was like a light version of South Park, but made in France by French humorists. And that turned down a lot of uh, financial guys saying, you know, if Canal Plus is not doing any adult shows now, it means that there, are, there is no way we can produce your TV series. So if you come back with the same idea, but instead of targeting the adults, you target the young, like 6 to 12, maybe we'll be able to deal something out. So the producer came back to me and, and said, okay, that's what they told me. What do you want to do about that? And I told him that I was not interested in doing this for 6 to 12 years old. So he told me, make a movie out of your uh, Bible and screenplays. If you make a movie, and if this movie has a success, you will be able to do your TV series as you like it. And at that time, it was a really cool idea. But we had to, to write the screenplay in less than a month. So um, my friend Elise 
and I worked like crazy madness on this screenplay. The first draft was really shitty because we tried to put everything we thought that would be cool in the first season of 26 episodes right inside a one hour and a half length movie. We, we trashed the first draft and wrote a second draft and a third draft and the third draft was starting to be okay but it's at that time where the company where I was working started to get down you know uh, because of the crisis they had to make choice and at that time this company was um, producing a movie on which he had already the finance so I said to them okay you have to, if you want to survive you have to select a project and it won't be mine so I know it's sad but I'm gonna take my project and trying to doing to do it on my own we keep working together and trying to put up some some things for the ANSI Film Festival to have some kind of trailer to find more money on, on finance pilot but the thing is the family was broken I put the project in limbo earlier this year I was still talking about that project with Anthony uh, who is the main designer of uh, the project since the beginning and Elise who wrote the characters and they were telling me that I should really do this thing because uh, I couldn't stop talking about it for like four years or five years since it was cancelled and I told them yeah maybe maybe you're right maybe it's the time I spent my last three years working at Stupeflix creating pipeline tools for After Effects so my experience in build in scripting in After Effects was enough for me to create new scripts to match my needs and because of that I felt confident that I was going to be able to create the movie I want by designing the tools I need to stay with a small budget and that's what I spent the first half of the year doing I really teared the story apart, I removed a lot of things that was still from the TV series and I added a lot of things that was really for the purpose of this movie. And this this step was really interesting because I used index card on iPad and I could like that recreate an entire storyline from the remains of the of the previous version and from that remains I built up something new. At that time I had the structure of the new story, it was not written yet but I had the structure and I started to imagine a way to do this project and the first thing came that came to my mind is I want to document it. I've been a backer of Double Fine Adventure Game and every month or so they release an episode of what was done the month before and in fact some of the things they've shown us uh, inspired me for my own pipeline so I wanted to share this experience with everyone because you know maybe I'm not the only one dreaming of, of directing and producing an animation movie the second thing is I decided that instead of keeping all the tools I make for me, which is a bit selfish by the way, I could share them with the world. And that's how I want to increase the budget on the movie. So if people like the, the tools I create and buy them, then it gets me more money. And that's why I, I released my first script based on my workflow, which is storyboarding. And it's a simple script that imports a screenplay. So you create, you write your screenplay and you can import it inside After Effects and it will automatically create a rough cut for you. And it will create all the composition for the characters and also for the scenes and the location. It's an example of how you can, at the very beginning of the project, do a lot of iteration on ideas and on the story because in animation what costs money and what costs time it's when you do the animation itself so 
being able to iterate on ideas and, uh, and to get a sense and a feeling of pace as soon as a scene is written is really important. And I hope that this tool will allow us to get the best of the story and of what uh, we are creating so then we can focus on animating only the, the what, Fran what we call in France the substantifique moelle, which means the best part of the story. All things that won't fit will have to be removed, but we can know that very, very early in the process. Developing the script also came with some complication because I had to separate the time uh, allocated to development uh, of the tools and the time I spent on developing the story and the ideas. So I had to find a way to divide my uh, programmatic uh, time and my creative time. And for that, I, I had to find a solution. And the solution came to me that all the creative stuff needs to be done at home, while all the technical stuff needs to be done somewhere else. And this somewhere else is uh, at the office. So I stay late at night when everyone is gone home at the Stupeflix HQ in Paris to develop my script because when I'm at Stupeflix I'm in a technical uh, state of mind even though I do creative stuff for them uh, my mind is I'm at work so I have to be precise and technical and then I come back home I have 20 minutes of train to let all the technical stuff go away from my mind I come home and I can start to be creative. And this differentiation between the location, one location for technical stuff and one location for creative stuff is really important for me because it really helps me concentrate on what I have to do. And when I'm at home, I know that I don't have to care about my scripts and my plugins and my technical stuff at all. I just have to focus on my creative needs and my creative questioning. Aside from the creative and technical part, there is a third thing that needs to be done and it's defining the needs for everyone of the team. For now we are just two but we, are, we will be at some point uh, three, four, five, I don't know how it will depend of course on the budget and on the needs but I have to know what I need to do my stuff, which I know because I'm doing it, but I, I have to know what Anthony needs to work properly. Because the project is so small in funding, we have to be super efficient. And to be super efficient, I'm developing my scripts, of course, but I need to have the hardware to work with that. With Anthony, we've been working with Wacom tablets for like seven or eight or 10 years and it's great and it works great but a revolution happened four years ago with the first introduction of the iPad and the multi-touch devices. With the iPad I can really sketch stuff quite easily and send them to Anthony so he can check them out and maybe redraw re them uh, with his Wacom tablet and it's a loss of time because the iPad don't have the precision and the sensitivity of a Wacom tablet. It's It has some very interesting features like pinch to zoom and stuff like that that I don't have on the Wacom tablets. If you want to be efficient, we would like to merge the both worlds. And that's how I discovered the Cintiq from Wacom. And I know that in order to be efficient and to work better, we will need this for the movie. I, was not, I wasn't even asking me that question at first because I just want to write stuff and, and do my movie but because I'm not the, the only one involved and because I have to make sure that we have the right tools to do the right thing to be really efficient and to be really fast and responsive, we need to have the thing that allows us to be that because maybe Investing some money on a Wacom tablet right now can looks like a waste of money, but I know that because this is a tool we need, this will be 
a big breakthrough in our production and we will be able to do this more. At first, I, I was thinking, I was only thinking of, well, if we are doing a 4K in stereoscopy movie, we will need big computers to, uh, to create a render farm or to have good specification to work in a, in a correct environment because we are both working on laptops from 2009. So the, it's cool to mock up, it's cool to, to write stuff, to develop, but uh, when we start to put all this into After Effects in 4K, it be, it's becoming really complicated. So my first thought was we need better hardware. And by talking with Anthony and by testing a syntax myself, it, become, it became clear that at this stage of the project, we need better tools to interact with our computers. And then when we start the hard work, the heavy lifting work, then we'll, be, we'll need some new computers. So defining our needs is something new to me and uh, it's something I'm still learning. Um, I don't know exactly what we'll need sometime uh, in two years or in three years because we plan to uh, develop this project until 2017. So we have four years in front of us to release this movie. A very important part of the project is how we defined our style. It's a 2D movie in a 3D world inside After Effects. We chose After Effects not because it can do it, but because we know this uh, software. Uh, I've been using it for, for seven years now, and Anthony has been animating inside After Effects for like eight or nine years. We, we put all our focus on the tools we know how to use. It's always the same idea to be super efficient. And so we are still defining the final look of the movie because as an animator, he wants the animation to be easy for the animator to do. As a director, I want beautiful images. As a pipeline designer, I want things to be as automated as possible. So, oh, do we take all these elements and put them together to create a correct pipeline that will suit our needs? And that's exactly what we are defining right now. Uh, Anthony, this month, created a design for our hero. And then he started to put it inside After Effects and to see how we can have a cool look uh, that is near what I imagine the movie will be and also that is easily animatable inside After Effects. And it is also designing the background so we can see how the two interact and how uh, we will mimic the depths of field or the atmospheric um, deformation of depth of field and all of this technical stuff to know where the creative process takes uh, the up and the technical aspect down and vice versa. We want things to be creative and automated. So we are, we are still designing the core of our technology that will result in new scripts that I will share as the storyboarding script on ascript.com. This month has been about uh, starting the project, defining our needs for now and for the future, defining our pipeline, uh, redefining the story and starting rewriting it, uh, restarting also the designs. And this has been rebooting the tools. The first version of the crowd generator I, I developed when I first learned scripting inside After Effects was uh, unusable. It was really just a proof of concept and now uh, I'm fully developing a new version that I will share with you soon. You can already uh, watch the video I sent to some beta testers uh, to, to, to have a feeling of what it's going to do. But uh, I'm really focused on this tool right now. I made the commitment to take this project up till the end. And the happy hand is the movie is done. The not happy hand, the sad hand is the movie uh, wrecks in front of everyone. 
And that's a pretty huge commitment because if I succeed, if we succeed, it would be so cool. But if we don't succeed, then we're also going to share that with everyone. And that's a bit uh, scary. So we can't wait to start this month of June and see what we are going to be able to achieve and to share all of this with you. See you next month for the follow-up of this story, so stay tuned.